and welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman, Ace and Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor. Hey, before you begin this Chair Interval Training program or any exercise program, it is recommended you consult your doctor or physician first. If you feel out of breath, unable to talk, or out of kilter, a little dizzy, or out of balance, it's recommended that you remain in your sturdy chair or return to it. You can do your best and take a rest, and you will get plenty of relevant exercise while seated. So just uh, trust your body, go at your own pace, and if it hurts, please don't do it. Today, you will need a some sort of hand weights. I've got a jug. If you uh, filled with as much water as you like and the lid on tightly. Slip that under your chair. You'll need some water for you to drink, of course, and a rubber ball. If you don't have any of these things, at least get yourself some water. Make sure your area is free and clear of anything you might slip, trip, or fall on because a big goal of this exercise program is to reduce our risks of falls. And we know by building strength, especially in our lower body, that reduces our risk of falls and it, it increases our bone density at the same time should we fall. So keep that in mind. The other goals are to just make our basic everyday activities easier. So I want you to challenge yourself a little bit and get comfortable with feeling a slight bit uncomfortable. But know this. We're going to exercise on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest exertion intensity and 10 being the highest. And our target zone is a 4 to a 7-ish. Even if you work out at a 2, you're going to get benefits. So let's get started. I've got some music. I'm wearing green because this will air the week of St. Patrick's Day. Whether you're Irish or of Celtic descent, you should think green and shop local. This is my Antioch college wellness center t-shirt and I am looking forward to having my near and dear uh, local gym open again so I hope you are able to utilize it when it's open but let's get going we're going to warm up gradually again whether you're in your seat or on your feet use your best posture think elongate through the spine and this will make your movements easier and your breathing easier. You can just march it out. Start to breathe at your own pace, ideally in through your nose and out through your nose or your mouth. But if you're congested, breathe however you can. Ah, just marching in place or on a nice sunny day like it is today, Outdoors for 10 minutes is a wonderful activity, especially if you're walking and talking with a friend. All right, but in between, it's also good to get some good strength training and some patterns. But before we do any patterns or strength training, let's make sure our whole body is gradually warmed up. Maybe wind your stance out. Stay right next to your chair or behind it and rock your body right to left. I want you to be able to see and touch your chair at any time in case you feel like you're losing your balance. Our chair is our assistive device. See how I'm able to curl those biceps in tempo with the music. Maybe double time. Maybe faster. We'll experiment with speeds later on again with our hands and our feet. But just roll those shoulders back a bit. Ease into some larger but comfortable ranges of motion. Remember, you could always reduce the range of motion or go back to the last thing that felt comfortable to you, but please keep moving. doing backwards shoulder rolls. Let's try it forward. You can start with little ones and make it bigger. 
Good. Just shake it out. Maybe shake your legs too. So you've got that chair there if you feel you need it for your balance check. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple patterns we'll work on today. They're very similar to things we've done in the past, but it never hurts to revisit the fundamentals. So we're just marching. We can march at, let's say, three or maybe even four speeds. This speed is tempo, and we could swing our arms in that tempo as well. We could swing our arms in three different planes. I'm going to step out in front of the chair so you can see better what I'm doing, but I want you to stay right next to your chair where you can see it and touch it. Okay, so we can move our arms in this plane as we would normally when we're walking. But we can also move our arms in a horizontal plane, keeping the body still and breathing. It's harder than it looks. We could also move it in this uh, over our head or frontal plane, side to side. So going backward, here's our horizontal plane. And then back in that natural or sagittal plane, I think it is, I should know. <laughs> Got that? So three different planes to move our arms in, if you please. But we're also going to use three different speeds for our arms and legs and mix it up a little. This is tempo. What if we slowed it down? Then we have to balance a little longer and that's why you might want your chair. Now you can move your legs slow, but move your arms at tempo. And that takes some coordination and some brain power. Or double time with your arms. And slow with your legs. Get it? All right, just legs. You could go to tempo again. Move your arms slow. In all those different directions. And we'll play around with that. You can move your feet fast. No arms. And move your arms at tempo. In different directions. So it's harder than it looks, but just have fun moving, do your best. So that's one pattern we'll use for agility and coordination and to get our heart rate elevated so our heart and lungs get stronger. Here's a pattern we'll use for balance. Sounds like this, sounds like lift, two, three, march, two, three. So we can lift a knee and then march, two, three, lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three. You've got your chair there if you need it. Oh, here comes my kitty. So use that chair or use your toe tapping down on the floor if you need it for this balance pattern. I think I got off the pattern. Okay, so one more thing we're gonna try today to, to lengthen that balance cycle is it'll sound like this. It'll be in sevens. So we'll lift seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then march one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we'll lift the other leg seven times. Got it? So threes and sevens. It's a lift two, three, march two, three, lift to seven, and then march for seven. All right, we're gonna continue with some dynamic stretches in our chair. If you would, come around to the front of your chair, take your time. Please get close enough to that chair so that your heels and your lower legs can feel the chair. Keep your chin and your head up. Imagine a glass of water on each shoulder and get your hips back as you sit down slowly or hover. Or perhaps you want to practice a couple mini or medium or full on squats before you get seated. All right, make sure your gear is all tucked underneath. And if you're thirsty or whether or not you are, I hope you sip water throughout your exercise. And when you get things down low, 
it's best that you support your spine by bracing with your abdominals and with your arm and leaning to the side. This is much kinder and gentler to your lower back. Okay, let's continue to work on these smaller joints. Wrists and ankles, fingers and toes, even though you can't see it. I'm spreading my toes and my fingers. You can't see my toes, you can probably see my fingers. Now sit tall and right up at the front edge of your chair, please. And see how it feels to stretch out your right leg and your left. Really engage your core, but keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. And let's see if we can push that opposite arm and splay our, or spread our fingers and toes as we do that. And if it feels good, squeeze those long, strong thigh muscles and extend the leg at the knee and flex the toes up towards the ceiling. Ooh, excellent. Now let's work on the wrist and the, and the ankle with a flex point flex. Or how do you do? I hope you this show finds you well. Good news, many of us have been able to get vaccinated and I was fortunate enough to get my first vaccine. Yay, I'm excited. I will still be wearing my mask when you see me out about, as I hope you will be too, and social distancing. But we're getting there. Keep up the good work. All right, this is enough of this. This is starting to feel like work. Let's stretch out our right leg. And support on the thigh. Inhale, long, strong back. Hinging forward, keeping the head and the chin slightly up. Reaching forward. Let's see if we can make circles with our ankle or our foot and our hand. One direction and then the other. Excellent. Sit tall, hold the navel in strong towards the spine to support it as you lean back and stretch those hips, or the right hip, by pulling the knee towards the chest. And if you want, you can do some more ankle circles, one direction and then the other. Excellent. Sitting tall again. Let's stretch out that left leg. And before we hinge forward, I want you to put your hands on your waist and close your chest, bringing the elbows forward. Inhale and bring the elbows back. Good. One more time. Excellent. Now support on that right thigh as you inhale, keeping the backbone nice and elongated. And hinge forward rather than down. And let's lift those fingers and toes and then lower them or a little circle. Big flowy movements and then the other way. Excellent. Sitting tall. Pull the navel in and knee back. Circling some more with that left ankle if you like and the other direction. Sitting tall, take a deep breath, inhale through your nose, and see how it feels to climb an imaginary rope. Now, if the shoulder does not like this outstretched position, you can always do a short rope right in front of your nose. You know you, so go at your own pace, move with intent. And if I suggest a movement that's too fast or just not feeling comfortable for you, you just keep moving at your own pace. So we're about to get started with a 10 minute interval of aerobic activity meant to strengthen the heart and the lungs. You can take a seat anytime you want and you can work right here in your seat, but we'll do that three different speeds of foot and arm movements and our arms can go in different directions. When we move our arms fast, I want you to brace so that your torso doesn't wobble all over the place. But breathe. Don't hold your breath. A lot of us will be tempted to hold our breath when we're moving really fast, okay? All right, I'm going 
going to be on my feet, but remember, you can do this in your chair. Dig those heels in, and promise me, if you feel like returning to your chair, do it. That's correct. All right, if you're standing, I'm over here on the left. You can either be behind or to the right. It's fine, wherever you are. Make sure your area is free and clear of stuff. Use your best posture, do your best. Just start out with this tempo march. And let's remind our arms, or just one arm if you want. If you need one arm on the chair to sturdy yourself, you're great. Let's remind our arms of those three directions. We've got this normal kind of way of swinging our arms from front to back. Good, at tempo. Now, we could make our arms go side to side, trying not to wiggle the body too much. It's tricky. Breathe. And then we could do the lateral flexion, keeping the body straight and strong and tall. Good. At least I hope it's good. Now, bring your arms down. Now, let's move our feet slower. No arms yet. Got your chair there if you need it. You can also tap your toe down if you need. No problem. We're balancing a little longer. If you want to bring your knee up higher, go for it. All right, let's add some arms. But let's make our arms move at tempo, opposite arms at first and in the side-to-side -side range. And overhead side flexion. Or lateral flexion. And rotate again. Got that? Okay, no arms. Keep those legs moving, but let's add temple arms. This is weird. Try your best. And sideways rotation. Try to keep the body tall. You can put one arm on that chair if you need and up overhead side flexion. All right, I'm feeling this at the tops of my thighs, so I'm gonna take a break. Shake it out. How are you feeling? Can you speak? On that scale of one to 10, where are you finding yourself? If you had to give it a number, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. Hopefully you're nearing a four. Just for a change of address, I'm gonna come over here to the right side. And we're gonna get our heart rate elevated by taking this tempo march a little faster. Remember, you can always come back to the tempo. So, fast your feet. You never even have to leave the ground. You can just pump. Got it? No, no arms. We're gonna add slow arms. Slow. <laughs> Breathe in through your nose. And rotate sideways arms. Slow. But your feet are still moving fast. Over your head, side. Lateral flexion. And rotating horizontally again. And how about one more time in front of the body. Slow arms, fast feet. Good, take a break. Did that get your heart rate up a little bit more? I hope so. Okay, now. Let's try that again, but this time we're going to use our tempo march and fast arms. This is where bracing and breathing becomes very relevant. So do the jump pace, don't hold your breath. We've got our tempo feet going. Let's take our arms and make them go fast. So you have to reduce the range of motion. Woo! Side to side, fast. <laughs> Stand tall. Overhead, small range of motion. Woo. 
<laughs> it's hard to coordinate. Go ahead and rotate side to side again. Breathe. And brace with those abdominals. And then down at your sides again. Fast arms. Tempo feet. This takes a lot of mindfulness, a little bit of coordination, and that's good for us. How are you doing? Still able to breathe? Let's take a little moment, catch our breath here, and do a little bit of balance work, shall we? How about, I'm going to come over to the side so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. I'm going to take my left foot in front of the right, keep my hand on the chair, and come up to my tippy toes. Squeeze those thighs together, see if you can balance here. And then let's switch and bring the right foot in front of the left. Stand tall. I guess if you're seated, you could do this and strengthen your calves. Keep that hand close to the chair. Excellent. Are you ready to do another combination of feet and arms? Let's see, we've had all speeds of feet, but let's go back to the fast feet or tempo, your choice and super slow arms. Ready? Fast feet. Slow arms, slow. Slow. And to the side, rotation horizontally. And over your head if you please. Side flexion, breathing. Good, side to side rotation. Keep the body up tall. And regular arm swinging slow in front of the body. Excellent, just march it out. Now, I think we have one more combination of speeds, and that would be fast arms and slow legs. I don't think we did that one yet. If we did, it wouldn't hurt to try it again. So let's get those legs going. Make sure you can touch your chair. And lift the knees. Slow march. That's all it is. Good. Now, remember, your chair should be in your peripheral vision. And you can slow your pace whenever you want. But let's try fast arms. This one's hard for me to keep the beat with my feet. How about you? Fast arms, breathe. Hold your breath. You ready? Side to side arms, this is gonna be hard. Keep, keep your balance and to talk. Go ahead, keep going. One more, three, two. Overhead side flexion, woo! If you need, don't be afraid to hold that chair. Side to side rotation. <laughs> I have to concentrate. Four, three, two, in front of the body. <laughs> Woo, I'm working up a sweat. How about you? Excellent. Relax. Woo, take a deep breath. Hopefully, we got you to your safe, comfortable target zone of a four to a seven ish. Before we transition to the chair for some strength work, let's get those hard-working calves on stretch. Walk one of your feet back, a little at a time, pace the heel on the ground and lean. The rear knee is pretty much straight. And if it feels good to you, you can kind of shift your weight back and bend the rear knee ever so slightly. But take your time especially as you transition to the other leg for the straight leg half stretch, walking that foot back, pasting the heel on the ground, leaning forward, feeling a comfortable stretch at the back of the knee to the back of the heel, maybe the bottom of the foot. And then if you like, you can shift your weight and bend that rear knee just about five to 10 degrees and you might feel the shift to lower on the Achilles tendon. Maybe you don't, but both stretches are really good. All right, we're gonna get in our chair. And as we do, we're gonna use our most effective, you don't need your ball, I just had to move mine. We're gonna do our most effective bodyweight exercise, squats. So 
Keep your head up. Remember that imaginary glass of, of water on each shoulder. Get your hips back. You could just hover as long as you comfortably can, but try to focus on keeping your weight even in both feet, all parts of both feet. Getting your hips back. And try also to keep your knees from drifting in toward one another. If anything, it's a good cue if you tend to pronate or you're a little bit knee knocking in your regular posture to think of pushing the knees apart and then get seated. It's a great time to get a sip of water. So as you do, take your time, brace, step to the side, lean to the side. Okay, we are going to use both our weight and our ball. We're going to sit right near the edge of our chair and get that ball between our thighs above the bony knee joint. And we're just going to let this, our one weight be hanging, arms straight, shoulders down and back. Let's get our feet a little closer than our knees and give the ball a squeeze and see if that's working. Now, we're going to add on to this inner thigh strengthening exercise by pushing our heels down into the ground, activating the hamstrings, pulling the toes up off of the floor to strengthen the shin muscles, and we're bracing and breathing with these abdominals. And if you like, we're going to add a little side lateral raise, or side lateral flexion, sorry. Now, how you move is up to you, but put as much into that squeeze as you can and don't hold your breath. It's counterproductive, perhaps even deleterious. Whoa. Strengthening the obliques, strengthening the inner thighs, the hamstrings and the shins. And I'm about out of gas on that side. Okay, bring that weight up to your lap. Keep the ball where it is. We're gonna hold the weight however it feels good to you. You can cradle it like a baby, or you can put one hand on the handle and one hand underneath, or vice versa. Maybe the handle's big enough for you to grab both hands there. However you do it, pull your navel in, resituate your hips towards the front of the chair, and lean back. See if you can tap your shoulder blades on the chair. We've got this added weight near our heart to make this abdominal slide, abdominal strengthener, a little bit harder. <laughs> and if you wanted to make it harder still, you could add a chest shoulder press. So control on the way down, pull the navel in, and don't sit up all the way. All right. Whoa, this is a difficult one for me. I've got about mm, 12 pounds. I, well, maybe more like 10 to 11 pounds in my jump today. Even if you're using your body weight to do this exercise, you're going to strengthen the rectus abdominis, the shoulders, the triceps, and the chest. All right, I've got about two more in me. And the whole goal of our strength work is to feel like we're out of gas or to feel like I'm, my form is getting wobbly or breaking down. And that means it's time to work on a different set of muscles. All right, so going back to our leg squeezes. I forgot to tell you, you didn't need to squeeze on that last one. <laughs> but we're gonna let the jug hang on the left. Long, tall spine. I get those legs squeezing again. I like to think of blowing the air out of my lungs as I squeeze the air out of the ball. Digging the heels down, pulling the toes up, coordinating all that, and then adding our side lateral flexion. It's a small range of motion, and that's why it's very important to breathe and not hold your breath with a 
small or a large or an isometric exercise. Again, we're strengthening the obliques now on the other side. Excellent. Squeeze that ball, do your best, and then take a rest. All right, take that ball if you would and just tuck it in behind you. We're gonna do one more exercise with our hand weight. And if you don't have the hand weight, that's fine. We're gonna do a little upright row here. So scoot your hips halfway back in your chair. Keep your heels touching the front legs of your chair with enough space. Keep the belly button pulling in and just hinge halfway forward. Sticking your nose out and your hip, your tailbone back. And then sit up and lead that upright row with your elbows. Notice the weight never needs to come higher than our collarbone. That's gonna put a lot of uh, unnecessary, unwanted stress on our shoulders. Now, dig your heels into the ground and think about this. Do you want to add a squat? You can try, and if it doesn't feel right, stay in your chair, but dig your heels in. Or come all the way up and do, let's say, maybe four more. Squeeze your hips forward as you come up. Breathe any way that feels right to you, but don't hold your breath. Ah, excellent. That was a total body exercise there. We can slip that weight under and get another bit of water before we move on to our next pattern. So that first pattern we did that was aerobic was to uh, help on a, to work on agility. Research shows the ability to move our feet and our body quick when desired with control, it reduces our risk of falls. But the bonus is we strengthen our heart, too. And of course, we did some strength exercises. But now the focus is going to be more on balance. But hopefully it also elevates our heart rate. It's harder to do in the chair, I know. Just do your best. And I, I forgot to mention, when we're doing a lot of marching in the chair, you might feel over... Uh, worked on your hip flexors. So you've got to be creative, maybe sometimes pull your heels back, stretch your heels forward, or just do the arms, and that's great, okay? I'm gonna be on my feet, but you can remain in your seat if you like for this lift, two, three, march, two, three pattern. We'll start over here on the left side. Make sure your materials are tucked away. Nothing's on your feet. Sometimes the ball starts to roll around or your little pet likes to get underfoot. <laughs> so, fast posture, whether you're seated or standing, elongate the spine. We're gonna start with some knees. Let's start with that left knee. Three lifts, here we go. One, two, three, march, two, three, two, one, march, two, three. I couldn't decide whether to count up or down. Got to be able to see and touch your chair. So look at it, make sure you're near to your home base. Know that you can tap your toe down or grab your chair at any time. March, or lift two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three, march, two, three. You can make it bigger. You could even add a little bit of a mock skip if you like. But just keep moving. One more time here. Excellent. Let's get behind our chair and use the backs of our legs. So why not your stance a bit? Keep your knees down and just kick your butt. Whoops. Three times on the right. Three, two, one, march, two, three, and three on the left. March, two, three. If you like, you can add a row. Keep your head and chest high. Lift, two, three. March, two, three. Lift, two, 
three, if your balance is really steady, you can do both arms. Lift, two, three, march, two, three. We've got a lot of sunshine coming through the door today. How are you doing? Remember, if you're feeling out of balance, one finger on that chair really gives you a lot of confidence and a great balance check. The other strategy that's anti-falling is, whoops, is to tap your toe to the ground. March, two, three. So I'm not sure you can see that, but it really helps, just that little tap. Ooh, I can feel this in my thighs and my hips. How about you? Shoo. March, two, three. One more time on this right side. One more time on the left. March it out. Woo, how are you doing with your perceived exertion? One to ten scale. Talk to us. Can you say one to two, three words? But you can't sing like the national anthem operatically. That's about right. Okay, over here on the right side, check your posture. Let's just kick it out. March two, three. Like your jumping rope. March, two, three. You got your chair there. Make sure you can see and touch it. Kick, two, three. March, two, three. Again, you could have that fake hop. You don't ever have to jump. March, two, or sorry, lift, two, three. Kick, two, three. March, two, three. Good. Let's add a little mental game to it. We can count by threes each time we kick. You ready? Here we go. Three, six, nine. Keep going. 12, 15, 18. Keep going. 21, 24, 27. Keep going. 30, 33, 36. One more set. 39, 42, 45. Oh, why not more? 48, 51, 54. Good. Take a little break. Hopefully I wasn't feeding you the answers. All right, let's come back behind the chair and we're gonna do it with longer legs, not quite as long because it's gonna work on this hip strength and our balance in a different way. So get your stance sort of nice and wide. Keep your body outstretched. This is hard to do in the chair, so do your best. We're gonna start with that right leg. Once I get a B here, lift. Two, three, march, two, three, 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 lift. Two, three, you can keep one hand on your chair the whole time, dorsiflex that foot to really engage the hip abductor muscles. Two, three. Two, three. Now we've been doing everything in threes, correct? Yes. Let's do one more in threes and let's go for a set of seven. Are you ready? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. March for seven and six, seven, and lift the other side. Six, five, four, three, two, one, march, two, three, four, five, six, seven, lift, two, three, four, five, six, seven, march, two, three, four, five, six, seven, last seven, I promise, five, six, seven, woo, did you feel that in your hips? Yeah, if you want, stretch them for a minute before we do one more set of sevens. This time, we'll come back over here and use our knee lifts again, or your kicks, either one. But make sure you can see and touch your chair. We're gonna start with seven on the left leg. Ready, let's do it. One, two, three, balance, four, five, six, seven, march, two, three, four, five, six, seven, other leg, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, march, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
You got it. Three, four, five, six, seven. March two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last one on this leg. Five, six, seven. Good job. I said one more time, but let's get it behind our chair. If you got the, the, the gas left in your tank there, widest stance, hamstrings uh, curl, starting with this left leg. Ready, seven, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. March, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Other side, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, march, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, march, two, three, can you count by sevens? Seven, 14, 21, 29, oh dear, 35, 42, 47, ah, I messed up. Well, good thing, we're about done satisfying that aerobic interval. Hopefully you stayed in your target heart rate zone. Um, we don't take target or heart rate, but if you happen to have a Fitbit, they're fairly accurate. Or any one of those kinds of devices that measures your, your heart rate. And a good thing to shoot for would be right around, for most of us, between the ages of 50 and 80 or even 90. Somewhere between 100 and for really fit individuals, 120. But it varies greatly for individual to individual. So science tells us not only that squats are our best body weight uh, strength builder, but science tells us that the talk test and the perceived exertion test are really much more accurate to a person and much more easily done. So that's why we use the talk test and we use the perceived exertion because how you feel is spot on. And sometimes there's very good reasons why you don't feel quite good. And that's when you phone a friend or get somebody's attention fast because seconds matter. Right? Right. All right, we're gonna do another set of strength work, but let's get a sip of water. Here's to your health. All right, we're gonna use our weights first and then our ball, all right? I was just remembering, if you saw me go on a little journey, I was remembering years ago for International uh, Women's Day and Women's History Month, a young second grader interviewed me and asked me about my work. And when I told him that, oh, I help strengthen people's bodies and especially their hearts, um, he said, oh, so you're like a surgeon. And I'm like, no, really, I'm trying on the other end of things. <laughs> so here's to heart health and, 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 and the staying healthy with the little things we do regularly. Oh. All right, we're gonna do some, my version of kettlebell swings with our weights. If you are sitting halfway back in your chair, able to touch your heels to the chair or even to the, the front legs of the chair or slightly wider, dig them in, don't let your knees knock. And we're going to pull the navel in, hang that, weight, or if it's two weights, down, long elbows, keep the elbows straightish but not locked. Pull the navel in and stick your tailbone back and just hinge slightly forward. Dig your heels in and lift the jug to about mm, collarbone high. If you have to bend your elbows a little, that's fine. Now, see how it feels to dig your heels in and attempt to get up. You don't have to, but if everything's working, you can get up all the way, hips back, drive them forward. Careful not to throw that jug around too vigorously. This is going a little faster with, with intention than our normal strength training. 
because it's cardiovascular, it's a total body weight squat, plus the weight of our weights and a shoulder strengthener, and I'm about done. Woo! Kettlebell, kettlebell swings, but our kettlebells are trusty jug. All right, now, we're gonna work on those abdominals again. Are we? What do I wanna do in between? Let me check my cheat sheet. Oh yeah, we're gonna do some one-arm uh, rows too. You can just turn sideways in your chair. Oops, I didn't wanna show you the brand name, but it's okay. See if you can get that foot tucked under there. You could take your left arm and press it into the chair. Facing the left side of your room, got the jug here. Hinge part of the way forward. And then point your elbow straight back. See, I'm moving my torso a little bit, but bracing and breathing. Now, if you want, you can push that other arm into the chair as you pull with the right. You could push with the left. You could dig your heel and the ball of your foot in and see how that feels. And if you feel like you could do it, add your lunge. Oh, this is a big workout today. So, do it at your own pace. Just a couple more. Are you pushing into that chair with your left arm? I'm sweating. You can see the sun streaming in through the door. All right, so we're gonna do another abdominal exercise, and then we're gonna do that other side one arm row, all right? So, just like we did before, but this time, Feet together, toes a little ahead of the knees, hold the navel in, and just hold that jug up close to your body. We're not gonna do any presses. Hold the navel in, tuck the tailbone back, and then lean back. We're going straight back, pulling that navel in as if we're zipping up the tightest trousers, but breathing the whole time. I find it's best for me to exhale as I come up a bit. Now, I want you to try to add a rotation. As you go back, look to the right, pull that navel in. Getting those ribs around, getting your jug. Your jug is right on your heart, right on your chest. So rotate those ribs and involve the obliques. If you wanted to make this even harder, you could add an opposite leg lift or same side, but only one leg at a time so we don't stress the lower back. And if that doesn't feel good to you, stop. Excellent. All right, as promised, we're going to do this other side. So face the right side of the room. Get that left leg back. See if you can slip the toe under. Some, sometimes arthritis or joint restrictions don't permit that, so just do it however you can. Pull the navel in, let that right, I'm sorry, the left arm elongate, reach for the toes, and hinge slightly forward. Row, pointing that elbow straight back. A little bit of body movement here, but keep the spine strong and long and straight, not slumping. You can be pushing into that chair with the right arm, and you can push into the floor with your feet. And if everything feels fine, you can add your lunge. That's a really demanding exercise, so do your best. I'm going to stay seated. It was really hard for me. <laughs> but I want everyone to feel challenged. I want to meet you where you're at with your abilities. Do your best. Two more. Breathe. Or stop if you already reached your goal of momentary muscular fatigue. Woo! Okay. That was a lot. We're going to put this weight down carefully. Grab a sip of water if you like. And now we're going to use our ball to strengthen the outer hips. And then we're going to just relax. 
Notice outer strength, outer hip strengthener can be done. Woo, that one tried to get away. Seated at the edge of your chair, sitting tall, just by pushing the ball and resisting with this right leg. And feel it in your chest muscles too. Keep the wrist straight. You could, you're strengthening forearm, chest, a little bit of the shoulder stabilizer muscles. And, and you've got to breathe, but also strengthening that right hip. You could do it on the left. Sit tall. Experiment with what, how far down the leg works for you. You might feel better just below the hip joint or closer to the knee. It's okay if that knee pushes out a bit, but mostly we're resisting it and breathing in an isometric fashion. Okay, now, if that was not very challenging or you'd like to work on your balance, you can do one more set briefly, standing right side of your chair, best posture, pull your right toe up, Place that ball down as far as you can on the hip and push. We've got our left hand right there, a millimeter or less from the chair. One fingernail on the chair gives us really good balance, confidence. Maybe just four more. We're also, if you're doing this standing on one leg, strengthening a lot of the stabilizers in the left hip. So, last set, whether you're seated or standing, tallest version of your spine. Make sure you've got that chair on your right fingernail. Hold the left toe up and dorsiflex the toes as you hip abduct. And this gets the most out of the exercise. We're only going to do about 10 of these, nice and slow, pulling the navel in, breathing, a couple more. Ooh, good. All right, we're done with our ball. I'm going to put mine out of the way. And I'm going to take another opportunity to stretch hips and calves. This is hard to do in the chair, so do your best or substitute your favorite other stretches. And I'm gonna put on some slower music. I'm using a new uh, source of music today called SoundCloud. It's kind of fun. And I try to find some Celtic music, but there just wasn't. However, I found some really cool, relaxing Celtic music to help us slow our bodies and minds down on purpose. So let's stretch through those hips that worked so hard. Straight at the knee, but not locked. You can stretch the side of the body and the hip. You could even bring that kickstand across. A gentle elongation of the side musculature of the hips. And before we go to the other side, let's stretch that right calf muscle or calf muscles. Gradually get that heel well behind you and take your time. Now that our muscles are all warmed up, ligaments and tendons as well, they're more flexible. We're restoring range of motion and our flexibility work, especially at the end of our exercise program, is really one of the most immediately effective things that we do. That and our mindfulness. So take your time and ease out of those stretches, that calf stretch. And if you want, look at that left hip. So straight at the knee, but never locked. And pushing to elongate that side of that hip on the left. Adding a side stretch, if you please. 
And you don't have to do that kickstand if that doesn't feel right for you. Ease out. And take that left foot back behind you, pressing the heel to the ground. Lean forward. We are keeping the knee straight, but again, not locked. And I really recommend taking your time and doing a set of calf stretches every day. Some gentle ranges of motion with your calves can help you, especially if you get little leg cramps at night. Just gentle ranges of motion and staying well hydrated. Um, it must be five because I can hear my cat's <laughs> automatic dish dispenser going off and she's probably perched right there waiting. <laughs> Did you know that a good appetite is a, is a great marker of good health? Mm -hmm. Yes, and being able to smell and taste is a good marker that you, it's not always true, but with COVID-19, that's one of the symptoms. I'm sure you know that now. We've learned a lot this past year. All right, let's take a deep breath, slowing our breath, inhaling if we can through the nose and filling our lungs from the bottom to the top. And just rest your hands in your lap and think happy thoughts or close your eyes and just breathe for, I don't know, three to five of your regular cycles of inhales and exhales. And just take your time. Notice your breathing. Notice the texture and the pace of your breath. And with just three to five mindful inhalations and exhalations, you can begin to center. I want to encourage you to keep, keep that mindful breathing and match it to the movements that we're doing. So one easy and sort of modified yoga pose is the cow cat cow as we inhale opening our arms opening our shoulders and chest and spine filling our lungs and cat as we exhale closing our spine shoulders and chest fully exhale and then do it again at your own pace So that felt good. Remember, if I'm suggesting a stretch or a movement that doesn't feel good, please substitute your own, all right? We're gonna turn sideways, but this time not to do our one-armed rows or our lunges, but to open up and lengthen the fronts of the thighs and the hips, as well as the body here. And you might even feel it on the shin. So take your time as you Guide that left leg back, your left hip just a slightly off of the front edge of the chair. And then get comfy and let that left knee drift down. Feeling a comfortable heaviness elongating this strong hip flexor muscle or the iliopsoas. Some people refer to it as the psoas. Relax, breathe deeply. Let the elbow hinge if that's preferable and pat yourself on the back. Mm, I like that stretch. Let's sit tall facing the right side and be mindful not to do it past your safe, comfortable range and go slowly 
with the crown of your head staying right over your heart and your hips. Exhale as you rotate, keeping that height in your spine. Stay here and breathe deep from the bottom of your lungs up to the top. You can even stretch your eyeballs a little further, but not your head. Looking over your shoulder and unwind. We're going to take our time. Before we turn the other way, let's stretch our hamstrings out a little bit just as we did in the beginning. But I want you to stick your neck out in a literal way, not in a figurative way. Pull your toes up closer to your nose. If it's comfortable, you can extend your right arm down the right leg. Sometimes you're able to reach your toes, but if not, if you had a longish or a a little exercise towel, you could loop it around your foot and add a little dorsiflexion to develop that hamstring calf stretch. Ease out and let's get the other one. Again, keep that length in your spine, hinging forward, sticking your neck out or your nose forward. Breathe deep. Bring your tailbone back, and as you exhale, see how it feels to dorsiflex your toes up closer to your nose, or grab them, but keep the spine long, stretch the tailbone back, and ease out, and we'll finish off facing the left side of the room, taking your time. With that right hip off of the edge of the chair, hinging forward helps. Sometimes it helps to swing it out too. But whatever you do, do it slow so you don't get a little cramp or a big one. <laughs> and once you're comfy, or if you're not, get comfy, let the weight of the right leg drift down. Let the breath Raise the crown of your head, and if it feels good, extend that right arm. And when you're ready to exhale, stretch through the right side of the body. Hang out here for another couple of breaths. Let that elbow flex. Give yourself a little pat on the back if you like. And ease out of that. Mm. My, our kitty cat is really broadening her horizons and she's, she's um, going on 12. She has some arthritis and a little bit of, well, she was carrying a lot of extra weight, but she's lost a bit of weight since she's been here and she's able to get into more things. And I tell you, <laughs> a little bit of moving and a little bit of mindful eating is good for all of us. So, hey, have some more water. Enjoy a few more mindful breaths. And just stay strong, stay sharp, stay connected. I, I think I told you I was reading a book by San, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, Keep Sharp. It's an excellent read and you can also get it as an audio book full of really good information of why it's so important to move our bodies and exercise our minds. And often the two overlap, so hooray! Wherever you go, keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.